Okay, F fantastic. Uh, hello everyone, welcome to EVE University's Introduction to War. My name is Professor Akademiak. Uh, I've been a teacher with EVE University. Um, I've been a member of EVE University for around 10 years and teaching for most of that time and also um, I am a junior FC and mentor and you know had other uh, roles as well. Uh, mainly I've survived a lot of EVE University wars in different time periods with different mechanics so I'm happy today to guide you through the upcoming war with uh, Breaking Point. Uh, they just declared war. It is now active after the 24-hour heating uh, period. So um, we'll just go basically through... Here's the agenda. Give me one sec. So uh, we'll just go through basic EVE war mechanics, uh, knowing our enemies, what they do, how they operate, uh, that sort of thing. Safety tips, so how to stay safe uh, while you're running uh, your, you know, whatever activities you like to run in EVE in general on your EVE University or EV League, uh, sorry, IV League. Uh, characters. Um, we'll go over hunting war targets and how to form for that and so on. And finally uh, Q&A. But I, I don't want you to wait until the end of the uh, class to, to start asking questions. Uh, it's considered this an open comms class. Feel free to ask questions at any point in time. Interrupt me in the voice comms or in um, classroom alpha uh, you can also interrupt me in in you know fleet chat i have a fleet uh set up for this class in case i need to link any in-game uh, information um, so you can find those links in, in that fleet uh just basic etiquette for eve university classes please set your microphone to push to talk in mumble uh, ask questions on class questions on discourse uh, not class questions actually on this same room classroom alpha at the top right you can see a little chat icon uh, so you can you can ask questions in that chat room or you can ask in the fleet chat as well and if i miss a question please let me know verbally vocally so i can uh, go back to it and address it uh, please do not wait until the end of the class to, to ask questions. I, I'd like this to be a discussion more than a one-way class. Uh, also, please be docked up. Uh, unless you know what you're doing, just please be safe and docked up in a station or a citadel during the lecture to avoid getting destroyed. Um, I'll talk a lot about what uh safety precautions you can take while running different activities uh, in this class so for the time being please make sure you're safe and at the end of the class there is a feedback form that i will link please uh actually i'm gonna link now just in case you want to leave early So it's right there in Discord chat. And in and also in Fleet chat. And if you join Fleet later, uh, it's also in the message of the day of the Fleet. Uh, it's really helpful for us, uh, both for EVE University and for me personally to develop and improve our classes. So we really appreciate your feedback. So, with that said, let's start chatting about uh, EVE wars and how do they work. So, we know that in EVE there are different systems and each system has a security rating, right? So, at the top left of your screen in EVE, you will see a system name or number 
um, and each system will be given a designated uh, security rating. So systems in J space or Jovian space or wormhole space are designated always negative one. Uh, same thing with nullsec. Uh, nullsec goes from negative one to negative four and we have low sec which goes from negative 0.5 to negative 0.1 um, and then no sorry I butched I butched that up so anything between negative 1 and 0 is null uh, my bad that's uh, my bad and then 0.1 to 0.4 is low security space and finally 0.5 to 1.0 is high security space sorry about that so what we know is that Concord is not available in nullsec or wormhole space or JSpace uh, if you shoot anyone or if you attack anyone or if anyone attacks you in nullsec or wormhole space nobody can hear you scream uh, there's there are literally literally no consequences for that in low sec there are a few consequences uh, but they're not major so there are short-term mid-term and long-term consequences and I'm going to paste the link to a class that I have on YouTube that that goes over this in in, in much much more details um, on on low sec mechanics uh, but anyways shooting people in low security space has some consequences but they're not severe because Concord's presence in, in low sec is basically just turret guns out stations and around um, and around uh, gates stargates that's pretty much it. That's the immediate consequences or short-term consequences. Those gate guns will shoot you. Um, you'll lose a little bit of security status. That's the long-term consequences. And the mid-term consequences would be you going flashy or suspect uh, if you shoot uh, an illegal target or criminal if you shoot uh, a pod or a capsule. So that's pretty much it. Uh, those timers run for five minutes and, and they end. But in high sec, there are severe consequences for shooting people. So as soon as you start shooting people in high sec, if your ship safety settings are set to enable you to do so, which is you know, having uh, ship safety settings to red, that means that as soon as you shoot someone, you trigger a Concord response. And depending on the system rating, Concord will respond within number of seconds. So at 0.5, which is the longest response uh, time, is 19 seconds. So it will take... 19 seconds from you shooting someone to Concord responding, it'll take 19 seconds. That's way more than enough time to, you know, gank someone. And this is why 0.5 systems are preferable, like Yudama and so on. Uh, they're very preferable for, for as ganking systems. But what if I want to shoot you in high sec without any consequence? This is where war comes in. So, to to allow myself to shoot you consequence free in high security space the only thing i i can do let's say i want to destroy your citadel like 17 seconds are are nowhere near enough to to destroy a citadel right so what if i really want to destroy your citadel uh astra house or whatever um in high sec then i need to go to war with you and the way war works is that you basically bribe concord you give Concord money so that Concord looks the other way and says, okay, I'm not dealing with this. I'm not going to intervene. Uh, that's basically what war is. You pay Concord 100 million isk a week and they just look the other way. As soon as you initiate war, so you don't have to cause this belly or, or a reason, you just pay Concord and, and that triggers a 24-hour timer. A 24-hour timer, it's just a notice. It's just an advantage for the defender to, you know, hey, there is a corporation or an alliance that decided to go to war with you. We prepared. You have 24 hours, and after that period, Concord will not intervene anyway with, uh, with these attacks. So, uh, to be war eligible, uh, right, you need to have a structure of sorts. So, for example, let's say Eve University drops 
all of its POCOs, like a uh, player's own customs office around planets or PI and interaction. And, you know, transfers all of its citadels and fortizars and whatever to other corporations and alliances. That will make us, as EVE University, non, not war eligible. So nobody can actually declare war on us. And if we do that, the war will end. So we'll, with the transfer of the citadel or structure, that'll trigger the 24-hour cooldown, uh, cooldown timer. And, you know, we will no longer be war eligible. Unfortunately, as EVE University, because we have so much, you know, operations across so many systems and, and communities and so on, there's no way we can operate without structures. It's just not feasible. So we need those structures, and that makes us war eligible. Right. So uh, I'm just going to address this question in, in chat. Q uh, only war initiators pay the 100 million daily, right? Yes, correct. So the initiators, in this case, Breakpoint, they are the ones who are paying... Um, Concord 100 million esque per week. It used to be different. It used to be dependent on the number of people and the corporation or alliance that you're declaring war on. So declaring war on Eve University with 3,000 members used to be much, much more expensive. Uh, but with recent changes, that became like a standard amount uh, of 500, uh, sorry, of 100 million esque per week. It's, it's per week, not per day. It's, it's a weekly um bill and and that's pretty much it but on the flip side so they made it as such as the attacking corporation also needs to have structures and one of those structures will be designated as the war headquarters and if they don't uh and if we decide to go and kill that structure the war headquarters then we end the war so it made it as such that we have a chance to end the war to defend ourselves by destroying their structure. So it's a little bit of balance. It used to be that you know they had to pay whatever they had to pay, uh, depending on the number of members. But there is no way for us to end the war, and and that was sucky because there's nothing really we can do about it. Uh, but with the new mechanics now, we have a chance, and we typically do straps and go bash structures and um, and you know defend ourselves. We just end. A week ago, uh, we went and bashed their structure. I was the you know, second for for the bash fleet. We, we just went there and, and destroyed the structure and ended the war. Uh, so that's what the enemy does. We don't let these wars uh, last for long. We do our best to, to end them. Right? Uh, so any questions before I, I move on from the slide? So there's a question in fleet. Uh, why do we need to use so many separate channels for comms, forum, and game Discord mumble? Thank you. Uh, that's, a, that's an excellent question. That's actually one of the things raised in, um, you know, when we were talking about the Wormhole Campus uh, recent events and stuff. So uh, Discord is great for text chats and communication and streaming video, like what we're doing right now, uh, streaming the class so you can, can see the slides and stuff. Mumble is fantastic for audio. It's so low in latency, it doesn't take any bandwidth, it's it's the best really, and it has overlays that you can have over your game, so you know who's talking and so on. So it has a lot of benefits. So Discord and Mumble are necessary. Uh, in-game channels are required things like linking, um, you know, linking in-game links. If I want to link you a character or a corporation or a war report and stuff, I can't link that to you a game. I need to link that to you inside the game. All right. So so that's where in-game communication plays in. And finally, four is more used towards uh, non-urgent long-term discussions. Let's say we are talking about you know, changing a doctrine and discussing why, you know, we need to change this doctrine, how ships operate, uh, what are the drawbacks and, and benefits and yada yada. So these types of long-term conversations are get lost in, in, in Discord. So uh, forums are best for that. So so each channel has its pros and cons. And I, I know it can, it can get confusing and annoying to, to follow. But, you know, I'm going to go back and look at this from the perspective of this class and wars in-game. Communication channels are instant, and uh, they give you intel on exactly which characters are in which systems, flying which ships, uh, which is very, very useful uh, to to people who are flying around, and, and especially for FCs who will be operating fleets that will counter uh, the war targets and, and go hunt them. So, any other questions? Sweet. So, like I said, the cost of war is 100 mil is per week. Uh, if we get a war deck, then we can decide to make the war mutual. And in that case, we waive the fee that the enemy has to pay to Concord. So why do this, you might ask? Uh, it's great to have them pay, right? Because they are in the war for money. They want to kill our ships and steal our loot. And if the cost benefit analysis 
looks like they're getting more risk than paying, then, you know, they're going to keep the war going. Uh, so why, you know, do uh, make a war mutual? That's because people, or not people, I would say, corporations and alliances can join a war as allies. So, for example, here's a little screenshot of RVB, the Red Federation of RVB, joined us an allied war. So that means if we had declared that war, uh, which we didn't, but just, you know, for, for argument's sake, if we had declared that war and Red Federation joined us, then both of us, uh, if University and Red Federation, will only need to pay 100 million collectively, not per organization. So it makes war cheaper if you have multiple allies joining. So if we see that, you know, Breaking Point has a bunch of allies joining in all of a sudden, then in that case, we would make war mutual. We will say, hey, we're going to, you know, we're going to fight this. We will issue a field. We will fight this. This is a mutual war. And, you know, um, we waive the 100 million risk that you pay. But also, all your allies are now non-eligible war targets. So they can't actually be in the war. So they drop from the war. So it has its benefits as well. Um, if, if you find that enemies have a lot of powerful allies, then it might be wise to make the war mutual. Uh, if a war mutual allies have been fired, they will be dropped from the war, like I said. Uh, and if it was mutual, war it ends uh, only if the uh, war is mutually retracted, like by both parties, or the mutual status is revoked by the fair. And then, so the mutual status is revoked, but that doesn't stop there. The mutual status is revoked, and then we go kill the or something, right? Uh, we, we have a reason to end to the war, not just revoking the uh, mutual status. So, Ending a war, how do we end it? There are several ways to end the war. Uh, number one, you know, they complete the week and forget to pay their bill to Concord. If they do that, if they forget to pay, then Concord will say, okay, you didn't pay us the bribe, we will now end this war, and, you know, after 24 hours of cooldown, we will start, you know, treating you as legal targets, uh, sorry, illegal targets, and if you attack each other, then we will intervene. So that surprisingly happens. There was a mad war in Nullsec just because somebody forgot to pay a bill on a structure. Um, and it was a very, very famous war in Solve uh, because of something silly like that. So these things happen, but we can't really as a university depend on this because, yeah, they'll, they'll be on top of that. They'll, they'll pay the bills. So what else can we do? We can surrender in exchange for ISK. So we can say, hey, uh, breaking point, how about we give you a billion ISK and you stop the war, end this war? And they deny or accept. Uh, if they accept, the war will end, it will, again, 24-hour cooldown timer, uh, but also they cannot declare war on us again for two weeks. After two weeks, they can again declare war on us and, you know, continue cycle, and this is not a great way to deal with wars because you're just, you know, giving in and giving money to enemies uh, who can and will, you know, declare war again in two weeks. So what can you do? You can do the PPO, you know, the Hong Kong form fleets and go destroy their structures. And this is the only way in dealing with things. So as soon as we get attacked by war targets uh, or get declared, we collect intel, we, uh, you know, identify their structures, we understand, you know, who they are, where they operate, how they operate, that sort of thing. And we find their war HQ. So like I said, they need to have a structure to be eligible to declare war or be uh, you know, have wars declared on them, same thing as the uni, and because they are the attackers, they must designate one of their structures to be the war HQ. And if they, you know, if we go kill the structure, then the war ends. If they have multiple structures, they can easily, you know, if we go kill one, then they can switch to another structure, and then we have to go kill that and so on. So it really depends. Uh, so far, in all the previous wars, because war targets are cheap, they, they don't want to operate a lot of structures because they're expensive and because they take a lot of fuel to operate, and they want to make money, so they typically have one cheap structure that they designate as a war HQ that we go kill and the war ends. This current group, however, breaking point, are different than the typical targets. They they have a lot of members. They have about a hundred plus members, uh, which is unusual for previous wars. So they're operating in a different way. We don't really know yet, and there's information as an FC that I can't really share with you uh, because of upsec and stuff. So we are still gauging and understanding how to deal with this different type of threat. So this war will be very interesting and exciting because it's not something that we're used to dealing with. Um, finally, the defender makes the war. So ending a war, going to ending wars, uh, the fourth way to end the war is that we decide to make the war mutual. Hey, you, you want to go to war with us? Yes, we'll go to war with you. Um, you know, dukes up, uh, get ready. You don't have to pay 100 mil. We will fight as long as it takes. And then the aggressor realizes maybe those guys are serious. So they retract the war declaration. and that ends the war. No matter how the war ends, there's always going to be a 24-hour cool period to notice that the war will end in 24 hours, just like 
when they declared war yesterday, they took 24 hours to take effect. Any questions? So I'm not sure it's based on my time, but I do have a question. So, how about the three players? Um, are we affected by this? Or, like, I, think, I, I, I don't see myself being able to join the war since I can't afford any, uh, you know, decent suits. So. That's, okay, so that's a fantastic question. How can you, you know, join the war? And I'll, and I'll talk about two things related to that. Number one, you know, being safe and not feeding kills to the enemy, because that's exactly what they want. If you keep, you know, running missions and losing ships to the enemy, um, that gives them loot, which gives money, which gives them, you know, a cost benefit analysis. They make their 100 mil and, and more, so that makes wage war and continue to do so. Uh, so that's one thing you can do to avoid, you know, war is just by being safe and, and not doing stuff. And I'll explain how to do uh, some of that later. But to join the war efforts, i.e., going to war and going to shoot war targets. You don't need to have your own ships. You don't need to have high-end ships. We typically throw cheap ships at them. It's an ISK war game. Uh, choose, you know, low ISK ships. We sometimes provide ships to players. So in StratOps specifically, you are not expected to bring your own ships or pay for them. We provide those to you at no cost. All you need to do is show up, get in the ship, and then the uni, or, or go attack the enemy. That's pretty much all you need to do. Okay, my, my question was really, really related to the, uh, the rise of the ships, but, but the skill uh, required to uh, pilot bigger, stronger ships, like cruiser, battle cruisers, and stuff. So, I know, uh, it's really because that's what I can tell right now. I haven't really do much regular, even on Friday, right? So, I'm going to avoid into details about doctrines and stuff because this is streamed and record, but trust me, as you know, it's a junior SC, but there are senior SCs and so on in the uni who decide these matters, which ships to use and stuff. We really know the limitations and, and the handicap that we have in university. We are a learning corporation, and by, by definition, we have low-skill pilots. And our mission is to help those pilots learn the game, right? So A, you will never be turned away from a fleet because you have skills, because that goes against our mission. And B, every doctrine or every, you know, uh, big strata off or whatever, or even small, you know, uh, fleets that you will find, you will find that the FCs has provided low-skill options uh, for new bros uh, that you can definitely use and, and, you know, engage in and be an active member in the fleet. So if you have low skills, do not worry about it. You can still be part of this war. You can still be part of fleets. If you need, you can still be part of communities. Uh, that's not a barrier. That's what the unis out basically. Okay, I don't see any other questions in fleet chat or in Discord. So are there any other questions? Last chance. Okay, so like I said, any time I just speak over time chat or whatever. So how do you know whether or not we're at war? Uh, you know, several simple ways to know. The easiest and most obvious way is that if you're an Ivy League character in university or any other, you know, uh, Hall of Residence, Alliances, whatever, at the top left corner of your screen, above your search bar and system information, all that, there will be this icon of two swords, and that will uh, indicate that you are at war with a corporation. So over it will tell you that you are currently at, at, at an aggressive war with breakpoint. Uh, the presence of that icon is immense during war. Uh, the second thing is the records and staff would change the message of day in Alliance chat. So uh, if you're an university or IDEC in any capacity, uh, then you have access to the uh, Alliance chat, and they typically update this with our current status, whether you're up. Finally, if you go to your Neocom social corporations, uh, and on the wars tab, check our current wars, it'll tell you whether or not we are at war. So this is something I need to link in so I have fleet. So let me just try this quickly. Oh, my notes were my notes. The notepad has all the uh, notes. Okay. Anyway, sorry, I, I, I misplaced this somewhere. Uh, just to save time, that way, wasting time. Uh, follow this menu Neocom, uh, which is a uh, social corporation and corporation. Check wars, our wars, and it will tell you the current wars we're engaged. Like that, you will see the, you know, the war report, which is important. The war tells you information about a current war, like who killed whom, uh, who's being the ISK war and stuff, because that's basically what they declared war for is to kill our members of the loot. So I'm going to make this report now. Let's the chat, sorry, I cannot keep them in the classroom Discord, uh, but you guys can see how you can find it uh, on the presentation. And if you see the graph, you can see that we lost one in the sales ship. So we lost the ship so far. And we haven't killed any ships. The war just started, so it's fresh, it's new. Um, this is not a representation of how it's going, really. It's, you know, it just started. So it's very, very, very tiny, sample size. But, you know, we lost uh, a what? What is this? We lost a Mackinac, which is a mining ship, uh, an Amy, a Mingmon, right? So that means they are coming to our systems and they are hunting uh, mining ship people who are running missions in the area. So that gives you a sense of, you know, what they're doing, what their activity uh, is. And, you know, 
this is where advice and classes like this will give you some safety tips on how to not even build because they if you look at the kill mail uh the the, the one shot really i can't really say from ink it was worth 190 mil a day i don't know let's say 70 mil drops that's almost you know the 100 mil that they need to pay per week for the war to continue just by killing one ship right so yeah that's not good so that's why we need to be careful and and you know be safe um and avoid feeding the loot to avoid you know having this war continue forever all right so or why did they do that? Like I said, uh, it's for ISK mainly. They want money. So they're going to pay 100, but they're going to back a lot more. So that's one reason. Yep, thanks for for linking that kill mail, uh, Cass. Uh, can you let me know how much drops? Because my laptop, if I open a link, it's going to melt at this point. Uh, so 19 mil drops. So that's 20% of their war decoration cost so far, right? By killing a ship. They kill four more similar ships. They're already broken even, right? So that's not good. So this safe and, and you know uh, take precautions and stuff so why declare war like it says money uh, they want money Isk, loot, that's what they do uh another thing is to basically destroy enemy structure so if i want to kill the quads uh, which is you know if university's uh high security community headquarters uh, stack mod i can do that unless i'm at war with eve university if they really want to kill that structure they have to go to war with eve if they really want to kill any structure we have in high they, they have to go uh, to war with us first so destroying structures is a reason money is a reason and uh Kill nails, bragging rights, people take a lot of pride in their ZK and kill nails and whether they're snuggly or dangerous and you know how much disc efficiency they have. So that's that's what they find enjoyable in the game. And you know, uh, there is no right way to play this game, it's a sandbox, right? So that's what they enjoy, you know, all power to them. Um then we just want to make sure that we're not on the receiving end of that, uh, pretty much. Uh, also, disrupting enemy activity, logistics, and profitability. So I don't know if you guys know, uh, there is a major war right now in Nullsec or Soft, uh, soft Null. And it's between Boons, which is a massive organization, and the family, which is also another massive organization. Right? So if I want to disrupt, you know, logistics, people tend to buy and, and sell in India and then take that stuff to their stages. So let's say I want to, you know, have a fleet or a fleet to go after goons, right? Uh, as pandemic hordes or pandemic legion or whatever. I need to go to Gita and buy the stuff and haul it all the way over to our staging system and, and then, you know, um, start the fleet. If you can disrupt that operation by declaring war and treating our haulers and ISEC, then, you know, you slow down our operation, you, you know, or disrupt it and you other. So that's another reason to declare war on, um, on corporations, just to disrupt their logistics, basically. Um, and finally, people... You know, some people enjoy high sec PvP player versus player play style. It's, it's what they enjoy. It's you know, they enjoy dropping or on, on you know uh, miners and you know tears in local and you know miners say, why did you do this? Ah, blah blah blah. And that's literally what they enjoy. The game, just seeing people and, and raging and, and stuff. And they, uh, again, no judgment. People play the game differently. It's a sandbox. And the pirate can be uh, a ganker, whatever the hell you want to be in this game. Right? So there's no way to play this game. Our job is not to feed them tears. Our job is not to feed them loot. Our job is to you know be careful. If they kill us, fine. Good fighting local and you know walk up and, and you know be careful. If they don't kill you, just Great, that's amazing. Just be vigilant and watch your scan. I'll, I'll give you some advice about that in a bit. Uh, no questions, so I'm going to one. I'm... Uh, short questions. Go ahead. Absolutely. So in local, uh, let me see the next slide. So, so yeah, I'll tell in a second, okay? Uh, before I answer that question, um, here's an example of the war report that was, uh, that, this is similar to my LinkedIn chat uh, a few minutes ago. It's a war between, uh, the, the... oh, I, I edited this for for reasons, but anyway, it's, imagine that I am a corporation and I declared war in Ivy League. Uh, and then this war, I, I killed three ships, uh, and then I really killed zero, and, you know, that's how much ISK I killed. Then, you know, that'll entice me to keep the war going, because, you know, I'm winning the war, and ISK, and it's covering the amount of ISK I need to pay per week to uh, keep the war going. So this is what the war report is. Uh, you can find that, like I said, in the new comment menu, and social operation, our wars. So how do you keep safe? Please don't fly, you know, very expensive ships uh, while we're at work. Like some people like fly marauders or rattlesnakes and, you know, fish stars and stuff for um, PVE missions and that sort of thing. Missiles, whatever, that is not good because you know war targets can find you. Even if you're in a mission, um, they can still find you and uh, hunt you down and kill your ship. So uh, it's not really safe to do that in very blingy ships. So please uh, do not fly what you can't afford to lose. That's the golden rule. But also, especially during wartime, don't fly expensive ships in general. Um, that's that's another rule. Uh, it's not a rule like nobody will tell you no. But you know, being mindful of your colleagues and have that impacts them. If you caught killed, uh, just one ship could cover the entire cover. So just please be mindful of that. If you want to move ships between different, say I'm, I'm, I want to move a ship from high sec camp community like that month to a, uh, it's a an offensive battle or a star or whatever. So instead of moving it on my Eve University character, I can alt like fly it. His if she's F corp, and you know they're not at war, so we can safely fly that ship to the camps without you know risking it. Um, if you want alt, that is absolutely fine. This is Eve University, like I said, we do not expect people to be frozen, have multiple accounts, and all of that sort of thing. So. There are ways that you can help you. We have a installing service. Have, you know, if you just go, like, let's say, for example, I have a ship that I want to move to the NullSec community or PC9 system, uh, and I don't have a valley alt, and I don't, you know, I'm afraid in sec, and I don't know what to do. Just go to Mumble, go to NSC Mumble, and ask people, say, hey, I want to move this ship advice. They'll give you advice, and, or they will 
actually English for you. Uh, people are very helpful in university, so rely on the kindness of people around you in university. It's it's a really peaceful community, and people are more than willing to help them, uh, especially helping move world around. This, this, that's the reason that this is what we do. Uh, this is what we're here for. Um, so like I said, yeah, if you're not sure about something, if you want to do something, you're not sure whether it's safe, or not it's, you know, the right thing to do, like, just ask around. People will more, uh, more than happily help you to, to move your stuff around. So going back to your question, how do you identify war targets, right? So they're, the actual war targets, the legal war targets, will show in local as such as uh, they will have an icon with a star, and that icon is going to be a red square with a white star. That icon will be flashing on and off, on and off, on and off constantly. That means that this target is a legal target. So the flashing means that they are legal targets. There are different types of flashing. And the star in the red square means that they are war targets. So, so this is how you identify war targets in, in a station, um, in, in any chat or whatever, by that icon next to their name. The, they will usually use out of core alts. So, you know, they don't want you to know that they're here. They don't want to rush into the system and give you, you know, spook you if you're not paying attention to stuff. And you've got local SEO or target, then you're spooked and, you know, we'll pop them back up and stuff. But to be able to give them some better chance in logging and killing you, instead of jumping with their war target accounts, they jump with another out of core account, like Scout, that they use. And they try to find you first using that Scout, and then they jump their, their war target. And, and so, uh, the ones we identify, the ones we know about, and we were able to identify, we mark negative 10. And those uh, appear as a negative, like a minus sign or a dash sign uh, inside a red square. It's not flashy. That means they are not legal targets. You should not attack them. If you do, you will be concorded. They are not legal targets. But it's just going for you that, hey, maybe, maybe we're targeting here and looking for someone to kill. So that's another way to identify threats. But remember that we don't identify all potential scouts for war targets. Because they can create a new one. I can just right now create a new alpha account uh, and use it as, as a scout in like two minutes. Free of charge, right? So. We don't identify all potential scouts. We can't really. So even if you don't see threats in local, just assume that you're being watched and vigilant uh, all the time, especially when we are at war. Uh, that's how we live in normal camps. Like normal camps. There's no local. There's no war targets. Everybody is not with us against us, right? It's a, it's a very dangerous lifestyle, and we assume that we're always being watched. We're always, you know, being hunted, and that's how we operate. And that level of vigilance is what you should be having in a second while we are at war. So signs of threats and, and you know hacks for war targets. War targets will uh, camp. Trade hubs like GNR, Dixie, Hex, uh, sorry, Hack, and Rents. Uh, those are the famous trade hubs, so they will wait for gates or industrials to come and, and, and shoot them, kill them, uh, or, or you know, going buying ships to finish with, and uh, you know, going back to stack one, and instead they get shot and killed. Um, so that's one thing that they do. Another thing that they do is you know, camping, bottlenecks, systems like Yama, Yarjo, and Valley, and stuff. Those systems are typically uh, famous for gaming, because they're open to five systems, so Concord responses 19 seconds, like I said, so it's typically a long time on the kill. The reason, that's really not relevant for war targets because they can attack illegal, but why these systems specifically is because they are bottleneck systems, which means that if you are going from Gia to Stackon, you have to, have to, there's no way around it unless you go through low second You have to go through them. That's a bottleneck. Uh, there's no way around it, right? So, because you have to, then all routes lead to Rome, like I said, or to Dama. That means they're going to be in that system waiting for any traffic going back and forth. Uh, they also like to, you know, hunt. I'm going to jump to the third one for a sec. And go to the fourth, hunt miners, incursion runners, and so on. So we just saw in this kill mail uh, of Samuel Owens, they, they, he or she was, was mining in, in a belt, probably, in, in aiming, and, you know, mining peacefully, and you know, they jumped by war and, and kill. That's, you know, what war do. They, they look for targets of opportunity to kill. Uh, incursions usually fly very uh, And these guys, you know, are vulnerable. They're PvE, or player versus environment fits, as opposed to PvP, or versus player. So they're very vulnerable, uh, especially in those types of ships. But we take precautions, like we have pickets on systems and, and stuff to make sure that if we see any sign of danger, then we uh, strap them and we'll pop the fleet before, you know, getting a chance to. It's very unlikely, it has, you know, very rarely happened that war targets were able to attack our uh, incursion uh, fleets, uh, because we're always dealing with pickets and stuff. Also, you know, they can combat scan the runners. So when you accept the mission from an agent, the, the location of the mission is just somewhere random space, and only you have that location, right? So how can they find you? Well, there is those things called uh, sister combat scanner probes or combat scanner probes. Uh, so the two variants of them. Their job is to locate ships and wrecks and stuff. And uh, well, not wrecks. I don't think they, they actually can't just called the MTUs and uh, mobile tractor units and ships. They locate exactly where the ships are. So the couple of scans, like the competent uh, pilots with combat probes, with two scans that take like five, six seconds, can find your mission ship in that pocket and kill you. And we'll so. Uh, so always be looking out on your scanner, directional scanner, uh, for these probes. Uh, please make sure you have the university overview settings to be able to see a war is flashing and be able to see the you know probes on, on, on your direction scanner and stuff. If you don't have the university overview on the chat here in a second, you know what's So in Discord and I'm gonna put the chats as well. Uh, so that's the channel. Uh, advice is if you don't have the overview, just reset the overview settings and uh, install this one instead. It's, it's amazing, it has all the things that you'll need. Uh, there's also a wiki page that explains uh, exactly what, what the overview does and how it works and all that. So it's, if you search overview on the wiki, you'll find it. Uh, I'm not going to open that right now. Uh, if anyone else wants to find it, link it, that would be appreciated. Any questions so far? We're almost done. Um, but I just want to see if anyone has a question. 
looks like there's there are no questions, so uh, move on, safety tips, uh, war time, and beyond. So this is you know common set stuff that you should be following in general, not just in war, but especially in war. Never AFK in space. So if you're running a mission, I know someone like to you know throw a British star on a mission just so AFK and make it or whatever, and, and the ish star takes care of the rest. That is bad just because you know like I said, you can get combat skin down and you will lose your, your ship. So that's not good. Uh, it's not good in, in war time, right? Never not these can when they, so this is something I specifically learned when we won't campus. We always need to know dangers around us. So we have our directional scanners at a 360, 14.3 AU, the maximum, like the maximum on both slurs. And we're just scanning that V button. V button is the shortcut for uh, scan. Um, some people like to change that to spacebar, uh, or whatever you prefer. Uh, but anyway, you need to have purple tunnel syndrome from using that button. You need to break your keyboard using that button because it's really important that you keep scanning, keep scanning for danger, potential danger. Uh, so just spam that button, keep, keep an eye out on the scan and see if there are any potential danger um, ships that might be, for, for example, here we saw the tail mail of one of our friends uh, being killed by Proteus. So that means they like to hunt Proteus. So you know, if you have Proteus on the scan, that might be kind of danger and you know, make us what I'm doing and whatever I need to talk. Uh, what's the best filter to use for D-scan? Excellent question, Maggie. And, and uh, I personally like to use the D-scan defensive filter, uh, unless, I'm hunting, uh, unless I'm hunting. Uh, unless I'm hunting. Uh, I'll like change that. But generally, like 99 percent of the time, D-scan defensive filter, you know, get rid of all the garbage in space, all the, you know, moon stuff, all the uh, pauses and whatever, and just focus on the real dangers that might, uh, you know, it might encounter uh, ships and, and stuff. Also, it filters on drones, because uh, drones are also that create or in, in your uh, D-scan window, and you just want them the actual real dangers. Uh, drones are useful uh, to speed scan in other situations, like when you're hunting, when you're a scout. You want to see if somebody has their drone out, uh, and they're running a mission, for example. So uh, it's useful in that case, but not in, in different mode. Uh, Chaos, thank you so much for linking those. I appreciate it. Yeah. No, absolutely good. No, absolutely. Great question. So what? So uh, let's let's finish the sixty percent. I'm going to address that question in a sec. Um, so uh, so no, we're not going to be cowardly in station. We actually even used to do that uh, at some point in time when we couldn't end wars by structures, and the directives were to stop and, and you know avoid getting kills and you know weaponize boredom. And you know it wasn't fun for the war parties and it wasn't fun for us. So that's not the way we play anymore. It's it's really. Uh, cowardly way to play. Uh, so no, we do form up, we do engage, we do things that uh, you know rest the enemy and stuff. So I'll explain that. A bit. But anyways, back to our safety tips. Uh, do not autopilot. I don't like autopiloting. If you don't know, uh, if it makes you work to like the next target on your route at 10 kilometers, and that'll take you forever to you know move towards the gate, which makes you super vulnerable to uh, you know to be to be killed by military. So never ever ever autopilot. There's one <laughs> only one use case for using autopilot. Uh, does anybody know what that use case is? Maybe. Okay, that's, that's a good one. That's all I had in mind. But yeah. Can you do it to in the okay. Yes. So that's that's uh, an excellent use. So let's say you are in a very slow freighter or something, and you finally reach your destination, and you have an insta dock. So you work that dock bookmark, and activate your autopilot, and just you can leave your you can go FK. And, uh, your your ship will go to warp. It will reach insta dock, and it will automatically dock as soon as it lands, uh, because you have it as a destination. So that's that's literally the only reason autopilot that, you know uh, practically exists. Other or date, like I said, because that's another good example. Um, Anyways, uh, always watch local. Local has a wealth of information in high sec. Like, we have a privilege in warble space, we don't have local. Um, but in high sec and all sec, no second stuff. Well, there's a wealth of information on people in instant. And you know, if they are scouts, they're identified, they will hear with red icons, like if you're a warning, the war party might be flashy, yada, yada. So it's very important to keep an eye out on a local as well. Um, and if you're running a mission, uh, fleet floor, like an incursion fleet, or mining fleet, with And an excellent opportunity for people who are not highly skilled with the uni because we're, you know, we have a ton of people who are low and slow points that can't fly X or Y. Uh, that's a great opportunity for them to engage and, and be part of the community, and engage in activities, by picking and defending the fleet that way, uh, also getting a cut uh, from the money that the fleet makes. So we use pickets, we love pickets, we're running so they're extremely valuable. Uh, same thing in mind, and, and, you know, mission fleets and stuff. I had a slide for that. Give me a second. If not, I'll, I'll speak to it, but I think I do. Give me a second. Low slide, I don't have a slide, sorry. Okay, so anyways, I'm not talking about it right now, it's, it's not, it, it really doesn't require anything visual. Uh, if you, I know we're a little bit over time, if you need to leave, uh, please feel free to do so. Uh, but if you, before you do, please use the form for the uh, class feedback, I'm going to link it again. Yesterday, class ran like one and a half hours, so we're actually doing better than something. So here's the, the form, but I have to stay and answer your questions, and I'm going to start by answering questions about you know, being cowardly. No, the union is not being cowardly. We are teaching you ways to be safe, to not lose your ships, uh, and feed kills the enemy, but that doesn't mean that we are you know, uh, turtling or crabbing only. Uh, we have seats that will call out on Discord via things, or you know, in, in chats or whatever, uh, and call out people to form fleets and go hunt for targets. Last, uh, last war, we did that a lot, and we you know, had multiple fights with war targets. Uh, some of which we won, some of which we lost. It's the way it goes, right? So uh, you have multiple SCs for maybe to to engage the enemy in, in different areas, different times, and so on. It's always up to the availability of SCs. And if you want to SC, please go ahead and do so. You know, we encourage people to SC. Uh, if you're new to be, to be an SC and you don't know what you need to do, just talk to someone in the SC team. Look them up on, uh, on on Wiki. I'm personally a junior SC. What is this? Is it a so I think I'm the person that decides, hey, let's take out X ships. 
So let's get out, I don't know, Isis or, you know, Megatrons or Worship. They decide, Doctrine they decide. Let's take those out. And, you know, I mean, this number of people, I'll put you these squads, I'll this way, you that, you that. So that's what the commander does. It gives instructions and commands and leads the fleet uh, into them. Uh, so there are many SCs in the unit who do uh, you know, against four targets, to keep an eye out things. But although we, like I said, we encourage people to see. Uh, like with corporations, we won't yell at you and say, hey, you lost the fleet and you lost the fight and you know, blah, 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 blah. That's not how the union operates. We are a learning organization. You find people giving tips and, and say, hey, okay, so in this fight, what you could have done better is XYZ. Uh, and that's the learning opportunity. That's exactly what the university is about. Right? I'm personally a junior. I've been here 10 years, but I've been a junior. That part of the game is still scary to me. And I'm you know, dipping my feet into it because uh, it's, it's difficult. It's not easy. I'm going to lie. But it's super fun. So if you want to be an FC, uh, just speak to someone on the FC team and see what you need to do. Uh, or, or you know, contact me. I'm going to connect you or to you know, give you some advice. And, and so. You don't actually need to be an official university FC. You don't need a title to, to FC a fleet. So if you decide in an from now that you want to take out a fleet, just do it. Just ping for it, do it, you love it, they will willingly follow you to the depths of, of um, whatever, <laughs> of oblivion, right? People are bloodthirsty and that. Okay, so this is, you know, regarding typical fleets and typical fights and stuff. What about strategic operations? Uh, we do have senior FCs. They take care of these sorts of things. They, you know, find and collect intel of the enemy, they collect intel of their structures, on their players, on their active members, where they operate, what they fly, yada, yada. So we collect as much evidence and collect as much information as needs to be comfortable in arranging a strategic op. And then you will find a thing on this board at some point saying, hey, everybody, we need you in this system at that time. Please be ready. You don't need to bring a ship. You don't need to do anything. The only thing we need is you. Just show up. We will provide you with ship. We will provide you with everything you need. And you and uh, you'll be part of ending this war. You will follow SC commands and you will learn a lot by being part of these big fleets and they are so much fun to, to join. We've done dozens of these battle fleets and let me tell you they're one of the best because you'll find unlike most fleets that they where you have like seven, ten, you know, fleet members, whatever, uh, these battle fleets, they find hundreds of each <laughs> Many stars are willing to go and fight to chest so much fun and, and they're really great. I, I highly, highly recommend it. So, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Can't recommend it enough. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. yeah, no, absolutely. You'll, you'll find ample opportunity for for PvP and engage more targets. Don't worry about that. Just follow, uh, you know, ping PvP and uh, the channels that ping for uh, for action. Uh, let me check. They're called. So yeah, for all universe size, uh, they are ping PvP, ping PvP, uh, that sort of thing. So there are multiple channels, but those two mainly are the ones that you'll find the main action against war targeting. And the reason they spies is because we do have spies. We know we have spies. And we're a learning organization, and we accept people, and it's very, very difficult to say no or to protect themselves. So we operate with the knowledge that we are said division have spies. And we still win in a lot of cases. Oh, that's, that's, not a, that's not an issue. That's something we learned over the years how to deal with things, but that's everything secret and stuff. So don't worry about spies. We know we spies. Fine. Spies are welcome. Any other questions? Nope. Okay, uh, sorry, somebody's typing. I think that might be a question. Just like, Okay, it's not. So thank you, thank you everyone. Appreciate you coming. Please stay safe. Uh, so if you need any more info, feel free to contact me. I'm Professor Miak. Uh, I would really appreciate it if you fill this form. Uh, it really helps us improve our classes. But uh, yeah, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. You can call later. Uh, or if you need any more information on the team or boards or whatever, I'm happy to to help or at least you know, point you in the right direction. Uh, stay safe out there. Have fun. And yes, I'm looking forward to seeing you in these ops and both fleets against war. This is going to be a fun war, a different war. So I'm very much looking forward to it. Sweet. Thank you guys. Take care. Thanks. Good night. Thanks to you.